Today, I want to talk about becoming an Instagram influencer in a specific, maybe unknown, maybe an atypical niche on Instagram. And I have the perfect person to uh, really tell me how she did exactly this. Uh, her name is Lillian Pearson, and on Instagram, she is known as at Big Data Gal. And what Lillian has accomplished is pretty cool, so I thought I had to bring her on on my Facebook page and so I could ask her questions about how she grew to 30,000 followers and how she's accomplished becoming an influencer in the Big Data niche. Now, what is big data? Well, hopefully Lillian will explain this to us because it's not the typical niche that you will come across on Instagram, right? Typically there's fashion, there is travel, there's food, there's photography, but how do you become an influencer in such a specific, even technical niche? So that's what Lillian is gonna share with us. And some other cool things she's accomplished since growing her Instagram. She hasn't just gotten followers, but she has received three paid brand sponsorships. She um, has also gotten a spot in Glamour magazine, which is pretty cool. Going to have to ask her about how she how she's in a magazine. That's so awesome. Um, she has gotten on some podcasts that are super relevant. Um, to her industry. So she's accomplished all of this through Instagram. So let me introduce you to Lillian. Lillian, welcome to my Facebook page. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for having me, Elise. Awesome. All right. So first of all, let, let me know and let my audience know what exactly your niche is and what is your business? Okay. So I'm a data scientist and my niche is um, the term. Okay. So my niche fall, falls under the term big data. Um, and so I do training on topics related to big data and mm -hmm. more, I get into more technical detail within data science because I'm a data scientist and there's other areas that comprise big data that um, aren't really data science. So um, that's data science is my jam, mm -hmm. uh, but it all falls under big data and my business, I have a training business. So I fly to different countries and uh, give training. It's like a B2B. So I give training to um, professionals from major corporations uh, on big data topics. And I also do like live web streaming um, training from home. Cool. And where is home right now? Where are you located? I am on an island called Koh Samui in Thailand. Amazing. So are you <laughs> are you a digital nomad or is that just your permanent home now? Yeah, so I was and I did some like reflecting yesterday. I think I'm going to be in like six, I don't know, six countries or something this year. But we have a baby now. I have a baby. So we bought a house and wow. we take <laughs> her with, you know, try and take her with us when we can. And then... um so I'm still traveling because that's just kind of part of the life when you live on an island in Thailand. But with a little baby, it's in your if you're trying to run your own business like I am and my husband works. So it's really hard to travel right now. She's just only 14 months. Wow. So she's really young. So you have a lot going on. <laughs> you have you're running your business and you're a new mom. Is this your first baby? Mm hmm new mom, living abroad, living in Thailand, and you're an Instagram influencer. So you have a lot of balls that you're juggling at once. Um, and just for those who are watching and who are curious and they might not know what big data is, what would you say, how would you explain big data to someone in layman's terms? Okay, um, so all of the things, um, all of the activities we do in our modern lives that from the time we open our phone to, you know, when we check our Instagram or you go, you walk into a supermarket, um, all of these simple mundane activities are generating data um, because like you go into a supermarket, you're being video, you're being video camera, but that video coverage can then be, um, you can use algorithms to um, deduce deduce what's actually happening. Um, so, <laughs> big data. I would say, from from a person that's outside the field, I would just kind of term it um, like the digital exhaust that we are all creating 
And the purpose of quote unquote big data or these data tech engineering and data science is to create value, immense value from harnessing those, um, creating insights from that just ungodly amount of data that we're generating, like, uh -huh. you know, with everything we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, back in my um, days of working at a tech incubator, a few startups um, would really focus on the big, da big data space. And I, I remember the general gist of most of those company, what companies was, okay, so there's so much digital information out there on everyone. How do we optimize it for companies so that they can you know, make their marketing super specific at an individual level for someone versus marketing to the masses. I remember that was a big thing, mm -hmm. you know, especially mm -hmm. like getting specific to someone since you have all their Facebook data and their Instagram data or whatever it might be. How do we get personal with this person? Because we have the data now we just have to, you know, optimize it. So that was always my general understanding of it from a marketing perspective. But I just think it's so cool that you've taken a technical scientific space and you have brought it to social media and not just any social media platform. You brought it to Instagram. Instagram is such a <laughs> visual platform. So like, that's why typically accounts related to travel and fashion and all these, you know, pretty like uh, even lifestyle type of images, they do so well on Instagram. So how mm -hmm. the heck did you grow <laughs> an Instagram profile <laughs> So about the topic of data, big data, to over 30,000 followers now. Um, okay, so yeah, so it was actually quite the challenge because I have big followings on other platforms because I could figure it out. You know, I could figure out like how to grow my account. But on Instagram, I tried so many different things. It's just unlike any other platform. Like when you're working with technology, it's just like, how do you you know, how do you do that? And um, really, I didn't, I, I finally gave up. I said, you know, I'm not figuring this out. And so when I saw you had a course that would teach mm -hmm. me the ins and outs of how Instagram works, I was thrilled. It was actually like a life changer. No, I'm not kidding. Because I started from your course, I learned that I can learn from others how to do things and trying, instead of trying to figure everything out all on my own. Mm. So a lot of, you know, I've grown 6,000 followers since I took your course, amazing. but even more, yeah, yeah, which is, which is amazing. And but even more like what I like even more about what I learned was that I actually understand how Instagram works mm. in like what I'm doing. I have like some sort of like system for like, I use Instagram. I use it for fun. Yes, I'm actually addicted to Instagram, but I want to use it for my business. I want it to be something that isn't just a hobby, but also something that I meet people that I can help. And so uh, one of the ways that I also, I'm very lucky in that I'm part of, um, in technology, there's a very hyper engaged group of people in the coding space. So, um, and I code for data science. So I don't really fit in with them exactly because I'm not a web developer, but I'm kind of, I think, leading the pack as far as data scientists because we're kind of a different breed. We're like the cousin to the developers or the software engineers. So we don't really fit in, but we still code. And it's really like a family. Mm -hmm. So that's helped grow, helped me grow too, as I started, you know, looking at like trying to kind of pattern my activity around what's going on in that space. Although it's not the easiest because I like to be authentic and I don't, I don't fit in a cubicle, you know, like I don't, yeah, I can't, I can't picture myself like, you know, coding all day in a cubicle with like, just, I mean, I live on an Island in Thailand and I code, <laughs> but it's a different, it's not like typical. It's the exact opposite environment. You're on one of the most beautiful <laughs> exotic islands in the world, <laughs> working from home with a baby and still, you know, killing it in business and with your online presence. So, so with Instagram, so when, when we first met with Instagram, like you already had um, really figured out how to hit that 10 K mark. And I think you were even at 20 K when we first met, right? Like you had been working Instagram to grow and hit those milestones initially. So since you, since we met, I think it was last spring, I think it was in April or May, 
that you um, joined the course, Insta Growth Boss. Um, since then, you have had growth, but but tell me how you've also been able to grow your business or just have some cool experiences happen because of Instagram. Well, I think the um, the one of the main main differences between before and after I I took your your program is that the things that you told me to do resulted in brands contacting me and um, asking me like, can we feature you? Can you promote this for us? And like getting paid promotions and stuff. And I think um, I'm not aware of my peers um, in say in the coding space. I'm not aware that of anyone actually getting paid sponsorships because um, it's just not like really, I feel like that space isn't really mm, the, the place for that. But like the way the the methods that I learned in your course, it seemed to like, I don't know how it works. I clearly don't know how it works because I, but I just did what you told me to do. <laughs> and then I started having brands like contact me and being like, okay, like I had, it was crazy. I had um, someone representing Fiverr be like, can we pay you $500 to post like, um, about a, con a, con a contest for the Yankees. And I'm like, are you serious? Wow. That's freaking awesome, you know? Like, yeah. So like, I need to do, actually though, I just have gotten lazy lately and not been doing, I just, I, I think I need a little help in my business because I haven't been doing all the things you say to do because there's a lot, there's so much. Yeah. yeah. Really, you're teaching a science. It's Ooh, really yeah. the complexity of what you teach in the program. I swear it's like the science of Instagram. It you I couldn't believe so many things were actually going on inside Instagram <laughs> I didn't know about. I love getting your perspective on the course because you are a scientist. Um it's so so interesting, so funny you say that because I always thought of the course as yes, on the outside it's an Instagram growth and monetization course, but I always thought of it as what I'm really teaching you is marketing and marketing on a specific platform, which is Instagram, which has its own quirks. You know, not everything's gonna work that I teach on Facebook or Pinterest. So I always thought of it as a, uh, like a hidden marketing ninja type of course, but um, it's interesting to hear your that perspective. Is. Yeah, it's interesting no, that you, it totally see, you see it as being very technical and scientific, which it is because it's literally a platform and there's an algorithm and you gotta, you gotta work with it. Yeah, and I count on you in your updates. I see those little in the group and you say, okay, like this change is coming and that change is coming. And I count on you to like keep <laughs> up with what's happening on Instagram because like for me, I'm just like, you know, when you have your own business and everything, you can't like keep up with what's happening in your the Instagram. For sure. So I'm just like, okay, awesome. You know, Elise has got it covered. I just need to keep paying attention to what she said and it's yeah. a cool. And I will email you if there's any major update beyond the group in case you miss it, I will let you know. And as well, keep the course updated too, because the platform is what it is today. But if it changes three or six months from now, I know it's my job to stay on top of it and then also share that information with everyone who's inside the course. So yeah, so since you've grown it and really um, you've hit 30K recently, which is amazing, um, what are some of the cool opportunities and brand opportunities that have happened? You mentioned the Fiverr opportunity. Um, you've also told me that you were featured in Glamour magazine. So that was fun. how did that happen? Yeah. Well, that happened also, um, I guess they, they were just, uh, someone was scrolling the gram, as you say, and they like, uh, they found me along with some other people, some other women that are working in the coding niche and they wanted to, they were doing a Carly, Cl Carly Claus feature oh, okay. on, um, yeah, on, she's got a coding camp. I don't know if you realize that, like some sort of coding school for, I think, like in the in the developing world. It's something really cool. I don't know much about it. So they were featuring Carly Claus's coding school. And then they wanted to find a bunch of other women on Instagram who are like showing the day-to-day -day things that they do in the technical world. So they found me and um, probably because those hashtags I think it's really that I researched. Good. Yeah, through the program. And then they found me. I think a lot of it has to do with the hashtags and then the strategic engagement which is the hard part for me is keeping engaged. Yeah, 
Yep, I totally agree with you. Hashtags are key. Like when I look back on all the opportunities I've received through Instagram, which in my niche have related to travel or working from a co-working space, I think it's because people, and I do ask them when they reach out, how did you hear about me? And sometimes they don't remember. But um, I do think it's the fact that I'm tagging hashtag digital nomad, hashtag remote work with a lot of my posts and then brands therefore see me as an influencer in that space. So strategic hashtagging is so important. Um, when it comes to the strategy of your account, because what you've accomplished is really cool, um, you're in a space that's not like immediately visual when it comes to what you think of data <laughs> science, right? Like how the heck do you take <laughs> the concept of data science and what you do every day and your coding what was your strategy for building out your feed to be interesting to followers? What were your visuals that you showed in your feed um, to grow, do you think? Um, okay, so what I did was I adopted, when I like worked on the part about making a plan for my visual aesthetics, I adopted sort of like, um, so some of the posts, like mind me, I need to get back on track because I've kind of like, let myself get off of the re regimented schedule or whatever. But some yeah. of my posts were like coding pictures of me in front of my computer, you know, working. And then some of the pictures were with me, my family, um, with my daughter and with my husband. And then um, some of the pictures were like um, just some sort of beautiful scenery and um, like, you know, here or I traveled a lot in the past. So like, one of the places that I traveled and I just try and tell my work story through the, um, you know, through the, through the, I try and post a picture that relates to a story I can tell mm -hmm. about yeah, my I'm, career. Yeah. What I think you've done is created a really interesting feed related to your lifestyle and you've built up a personal brand so that people become invested in you, your every day, what you're up to, your work life, your home life, um, which which makes sense because what you're really driving traffic and attention to is your business, which correct me if I'm wrong, it's heavily based on coaching people. So once people follow you, they get invested in who you are, they like you, they trust you, when they feel, and these are people who are in your space, when they feel like they need the next step in their career, well, then you have coaching available. So um, yeah, that's just one way that you can kind of monetize uh, people's investment in you. So let me just share your uh, website. It's datamania.com. And what, what can your followers see there at that website? You have coaching, um, but who do you exactly help with your coaching packages? Oh, so, okay. Um, up until this point, I only had one on one coaching. And so I, I help either data professionals, people that are already in the field or aspiring data professionals to basically build up their online presence. I like, I teach basically all the things that I do, I did to build my business and that I do. I teach them how to do that from the floor up. So like first like researching like what area you're interested in and like finding your passion and looking at the salaries and all that. And then like you have to make the website and like figure out, okay, what do you wanna do with your branding? I mean, I think I actually put way too much into one coaching program. Mm -hmm. I'm realizing, cause it's like, okay, now you build the website and then you build, like start working on LinkedIn and Twitter and Instagram. And then we have to build the coding portfolio on GitHub and you know, and then start applying for jobs and strategies for all of it. Because mm -hmm. um, I've been doing this like five years. So I just, I walk people through that entire process so that they can start getting like really amazing either job opportunities or um, contract work where they could even start their own business. And I actually just um, opened it up for like for a group coaching program instead of one-on-one -on -one because then I can offer more time to the students and cool. actually, yeah, so... I'm excited about that and looking forward to like just a new direction. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited to see where your business goes too. I've been watching your growth and been celebrating your wins with you, which have been amazing, hitting the 30K mark, 
um, getting coaching clients coming in from Instagram, getting featured in Glamour Magazine, getting featured on podcasts. When you shared that post in our Facebook group one day, I was just like, whoa, where has the where has Lillian been? What's she been up to? Because she's got some crazy wins under her belt and all from Instagram. And I just think that thank you so much for joining me for this chat and sharing with, um, with people like the possibilities that can happen when you choose to grow, grow a brand on Instagram. And yeah, sometimes it's hard to predict, but it's pretty cool the opportunities that can come your way. Like you said, with those strategic hashtags. So is there anything else that you'd like to share before we sign off? No, I just want to thank you. Thank you so much for having me on. You're like a big, you've been a big mentor to me ever since I found you on Instagram. And I've been just really thrilled um, to learn from you and like telling everyone I was just talking to a woman. Oh, this girl says, uh, learn to code with me. She's got a podcast and I did one for her yesterday. And she's actually a developer at, or a product manager at Teachable. And I was bragging all about you because you use Teachable. And I was like, oh, it must be great because Elise Dharma is using it. <laughs> I chose Teachable because of its UX, basically. Um, as a student and as a teacher, the design of it is really awesome. So I'm really happy with it. You can let her know that. <laughs> yeah, she probably had a lot to do with that, totally. actually. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's a cool platform. And that is what I run Instagram Boss off of. So. All right. Well, I just want to thank you again. This was really helpful and really cool for me to understand um, what you have accomplished as a data scientist. It's even opened up my mind to the possibilities of what kind of brand you can grow online. I'm surprised, but also not that surprised because I just know there's so much opportunity in the online space. And the fact that you've taken Instagram and you have grown a personal profile in a niche and a space that you wouldn't expect on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Can I say, and it is true about Instagram, but I just looked, there's 164,000 tags on big data. So it's not like totally unknown yeah. in Instagram. And also the thing is you're saying about fashion and travel, because I, when I was looking what area I want to build my business, I looked at travel and the thing is, is that tech and doing data, I had to look at the supply and demand. So yes, mm -hmm. it's very hard to grow a, grow a account like in a technology space, but like as far as building a business, going against the grain is sometimes easier depending on the demand. Yeah. So I think what you're um, kind of referring to is this concept of red ocean, blue ocean and red ocean is when the market you want to go after is just so saturated, it's more challenging to make a name, name for yourself and get seen. Whereas you went to a blue ocean, clear waters, not a lot of people in them. And I think you were quick, you were able to um, quickly make a name for yourself in maybe a smaller niche, but that's not a bad thing when it's so specific. I mean, Glamour Magazine was able to search your profile out pretty quickly and now you have a feature in like an international magazine, which um, not many people can say. So I think it was super smart to go niche and go specific. So you've done such a good job and I'm so happy to have you as a student inside the course. And um, guys, if you're watching, if you have any questions for Lillian or you wanna check out her site or follow her on Instagram, I will share all the links in the caption. And thank you again, Lillian, for joining me. Thanks for having me, Elise. It was fun. Awesome. I'm so glad. And now it's midnight there in Thailand. So I'll just say good night. <laughs> <laughs>